Hello my dear students and welcome to Zenit Tutorials. A warm welcome to all the students who are appearing for ICSC examination. So I am here to share with you some tips and tricks to be followed in order to gain full marks in physics. Yes, it's very very easy to get full marks in physics and let me show you how you will do that. Before going for tips and tricks, let me first give you a quick uh, recap on the, on the format of the paper. See, a physics paper is of 80 marks. As you all know, it's for 2 hours. Now, section A, which is compulsory, consists of 4 questions. Now, each question is divided into A, B, C, D, E, 5 parts. And each part has 2 marks. Each part, part carries 2 marks. So, the total of 10 marks for one question, similarly 10 marks for all the 4 questions. So, first section comprises of 4 questions carrying 10 marks each, so 40 marks here. Now, in section 2, okay, you will be having question from 5 to 10, that is total of 6 questions out of which you have to attempt any 4. Now, in section 2, each question will be divided into 3 parts, A, B and C. A will carry 3 marks, B will carry 3 marks and C will carry 4 marks. So, one question contains 10 marks. So, similarly all the rest question contains 10 marks. So, you have to do any 4 questions. So, 4 into 10, 40. So, this way section 2 is also 40 marks. Now, moving further, I want to discuss the way you will write your paper, your answer sheet because Many of the students I have seen make mistakes while writing the answers. So, I will just show you the way it has to be done in the exam and the tips and tricks that you should follow so that even if you don't know a particular question, for example, you have got a numerical of 3 marks and you don't know anything about that numerical, you have forgotten everything, still you can score one and a half marks in that numerical also. How to do that? Let me tell you. Now students, first of all, I'll tell you how to write the question numbers because many a times I have checked the papers and students have written wrong question numbers and in the wrong way and I have cut the whole marks. So let's see how to do it. Now suppose you are attempting question number 1, okay. So you will write question 1 outside the margin, okay. And if you are attempting A part of question number 1, you will write 1a everything outside the margin. A should not be in the inside the margin. So, whatever question number are there in the question paper has to be outside the margin. Now, I have seen many students do like this. Question 1a on the next page they directly do b. They do not write 1 again. You have to write 1 again. Okay. So, when even if it is on the next page you will write 1b. You will always write 1c. Okay. So, everywhere this number has to be repeated because many a times what do you do? You staple it wrong or you um, change the order. At that time it becomes very difficult for the examiner to find out whether this b belongs to question number a, question number 1 or question number 2 or question number 3. So, everywhere you have to write 1a, 1b, 1c. Okay. One more thing. After you have finished question number 1, all A, B, C, D, E, you even if, see, if this is a page and you have finished here, leave this place empty and start your question number 2 from next page. Because when the examiner gave marks, for one question he will give the marks here in column below. Okay, at the end they total the marks of uh, this column. So, please do not continue your next question in the same page. Always start your next question from the next page. Even if you have used only three or four lines of that page, just leave that page and start the question from another page. Right? One more thing, if you are making any subheadings, for example, in question number 6a, they have asked you two to three things. Okay? So, if you are writing 6a here, okay, and you have to divide your answer in three parts, now here we will not write 1, 2, 3, they will 
not there should not be any number here which is not a part of question okay which is not a part of question paper so what you will do you have to make three points okay make bulleted points inside to separate the three points or you can write 1 2 3 or a b c or this number anything but i would suggest to avoid numbering in the answer sheet other than the numbers given in the question paper so don't do any extra numbering which is not there in the question paper just if you want to separate three points make three bulleted points and leave line after each section of the question suppose 6a is divided into three parts you will not write it in paragraph okay for one part you will write the answer leave two lines then lines write second part leave two lines and then write leave more lines so that the examiner can differentiate between three different points okay leave as many lines as possible after, even after each question for example 6a 6b 6c so after 6a you can leave few lines after 6b leave four five lines after 6c leave four five lines because in the end you might need to add something okay when you are checking you realize something is wrong you can write something at the back uh, below it okay so leave four five lines after each and every question okay next tip and very important tip that i want to give you is when you have been given a numerical and you go blank okay aapko bilkul samajh nahi aa raha hai is numerical mein hame kya karna hai so first of all what you will do you will identify from which chapter it is that you can easily do okay now you will have to identify it is related to what topic in the chapter accordingly for example if you have been asked some question of current current electricity write all the possible formulas that you know of that chapter okay you will write all the formulas and in the end whatever physical quantity has been asked to calculate you will write like this answer or solution is equal to leave a blank and suppose you have been asked current so you will write the unit ampere here suppose you have been asked volts so you will write the unit here because in the final answer there is half mark for your unit and there is one mark for formula so you get these marks even though you don't do anything in the sum the one thing i would like to add is if you don't know anything about a theory question please don't leave it empty okay do not leave any question unattempted write anything that you know of that topic you never know this was what the examiner was looking for do not hesitate to write anything that you know about that topic and i i'm sure you'll do well please follow all the tips and tricks that i have shown in this video do not leave anything empty and please follow all the videos that i've made because i've not covered all, full chapter i have covered the topics that will be asked in the examination okay for example the how you will draw the ray diagram very easily how you will solve any numerical of calorimetry very easily so these are few of the videos that i have made please go through all of them and share it with your friends all the best if you have any issue any problem in physics please write in the comment box and i'll be more than happy to help you out so all the best students if you have liked the video please give it a thumbs up do share it with your friends and subscribe to our channel and don't forget to tap on the bell icon happy learning at zenit tutorials